Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Good morning, tea sippers. Happy Monday. So I want to come on here and talk about something other than um, the SWV escape drama and Krishan and Blueface. For those who are here for the tea, those videos will be coming later. But every now and then I like to hit on real world topics. I know these videos never get views. They only get like, if I'm lucky, 50,000 views. But it is what it is for the people who just want a little bit extra besides what's going on in the celebrity realm. Um... I'm going to make this video real quick. So we were talking last night on Discord, and we've been keeping up with a lot of the stuff that's going on with not only the weather, but, you know, the water systems. And so if you guys are not aware, and I'm starting to see a pattern, and I've been keeping track ever since the whole Ohio train derailment. And one thing we had noticed after the train derailment situation that happened in East Palestine, Ohio, is that there were a lot of other train derailments shortly after that. It seemed like every other week, some train was falling off the track, crashing, blowing up. It was insane. Like, so many cities, I don't know if y'all realize that, were being affected by these train derailments. Now, if that's not crazy enough, I also started noticing that there has been a lot of random chemical spills um, going into drinking water supplies, and the shit hit the fan yesterday. Because if you guys do not know, um, I left Philly a few weeks ago, so this definitely hit close to home. And I'm still getting breaking news alerts from Philly because whatever city I'm in, I like to get breaking news alerts. so I know why I shouldn't be. And so all of a sudden I get a breaking news that, you know, to not drink the water. And at first I'm like, damn. The, the damn radioactive shit done went into the Mississippi. But then I realized, oh, this wasn't for my city, even though we'll talk about my city in a minute. This was for Philly. So basically they had hit up 1.5 million residents in Philly and told them they can only drink the water until Monday and they don't really know for how long. They told people you're probably going to need bottled water for a while. So this, just like we had a run on the banks, we had a run on water in Philly there's water gone as far as New Jersey, Delaware. The shells have been ransacked. This entire story is crazy. So let me go ahead and play you guys some clips. Check out what's going on in Philly, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. The city of Philadelphia just sent out a mass text to the 1.5 million residents of Philadelphia informing everyone to start using bottled water instead of drinking water from their taps because there has been a latex pipeline leak in a river that connects to the Delaware River where everyone in Philadelphia gets their drinking water from. Over 8,000 gallons of latex material, similar to the same material that was in a train that exploded in East Palestine, Ohio, has now been leaked into the drinking water of the residents of Philadelphia. The birthplace of freedom now does not have water that it's sure enough that people can drink. And I only know about this because my friends who live in Philly sent me a screenshot of the text that they were sent. I then tried to go to the Philadelphia Inquirer's webpage to read about it, but that's behind a paywall. Luckily, I was able to go to our local PBS affiliate to find out more information. I myself am not affected by this. I don't live in the city of Philadelphia. I live in an outlying suburb, and my water comes from a different area. However, a lot of my friends live in Philadelphia. 1.5 million Americans live in Philadelphia, and they are currently unsure of the quality of their drinking water. The government has said that they honestly don't quite know, but they're being cautious. So just, you know, get bottled water. But 1.5 million people are now looking for bottled water. 
1.5 million people. But yeah, yeah, it's TikTok that we need to be having congressional committees about. Sure thing, guys. Great system we got going here. Alert sent people scrambling to stores to buy bottled water. Lines were long at supermarkets and big box stores in Philadelphia and even South Jersey. A number of places sold out in a matter of hours. Our Madeline Wright spoke to some shoppers who left empty handed. Bottled water is in short supply at grocery stores across the city. We spotted bare shelves at Walmart on Christopher Columbus Boulevard, Target on Mifflin Street, and Acme on Snyder Avenue Sunday night. We're trying to buy some water. <laughs> so this is uh, the third place we looked at this tonight. Not anything uh, available. So just making our rounds. Annalise Foglio also went to three places to get water. No luck. Dear families, she's trying to get water before Monday morning in response to this email from her school. They're just closing down the water fountains, like water systems, so students are required to bring their own water to school. The water shortage is leading to frustration. Quamir Dublin delivers groceries with Uber Eats. Somebody ordered 12 one gallon bottles of uh, Deer Park, and I I had to tell them I couldn't give them because literally there was no other brands of water. This target doesn't want customers to waste time and end up disappointed, so they put a sign right near the entrance saying, sold out of water. My buddies actually saw people fighting to purchase water in the Costco and then ended up seeing them reselling it in the parking lot at a markup. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Some stores are limiting sales of water until more supplies come in. In South Philly, Madeline Wright, CBS News, Philadelphia. We begin with breaking news. The race was on to buy bottled water after a chemical spill in the Delaware River. City residents got an alert saying not to drink the tap water early this afternoon, and this sent people rushing to stores to stock up. And shelves are bare at many supermarkets and other stores right now. This video was shot just two hours after the alert was sent to cell phones in Spring Garden. Now, Chopper 3 over the scene of that spill in Bristol, Bucks County, we are told between 8 to 12,000 gallons of acrylic latex polymer was released by a chemical processing plant. Good evening, I'm Carrie Corrado. The alert issued via cell phone at 2 p.m. today said the city recommended using bottled drinking water until further notice. But a short time ago, the Philadelphia Water Department says that tap water is safe to drink today, and here's why. The leak happened in Outer Creek late Friday night. The water then flowed into the Delaware River and then passed through the Baxter Water Treatment Plant on State Road and we have team coverage of those water worries and we begin with Alicia Roberts. Alicia. Carrie, good evening to you. All officials call this a quote active fluid situation at five o'clock this afternoon. The Philadelphia Water Department confirmed the city's tap water is now safe to drink through at least 1159 Monday night, meaning there is no contamination right now and no need to rush out and buy all of that bottled water. Now the water concerns do not affect the entire city. Take a look. The areas in orange east of the Schuylkill River would be the potentially impacted zip codes. Those in green west of the Schuylkill are not impacted because they receive water from a different source. The Coast Guard and crews could be seen near the area of the leak from Chopper 3 this afternoon. While officials say that toxic solution is not officially toxic, that solution, I should say, is not toxic to humans, out of an abundance of caution, they did issue an advisory earlier this afternoon that tap water should not be used for drinking or cooking. At the time, they said it was okay to use for washing and bathing. Officials have been testing new water coming into Baxter, which takes 24 to 48 hours to work through the system before it can be in anyone's tap. A short time ago, during a virtual briefing, an official from the Philadelphia Water Department said they have not found any contamination. Potential for contamination is diminishing over time. Uh, we are uh, Fortunate that during a flyover conducted by the Philadelphia Police Department and the Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection, they saw no visual evidence of any plumes in the Delaware River. And so far, testing of river water is also revealing uh, no levels of contamination near the Baxter intake. Now, officials are expected to give another update later tonight or tomorrow morning, and they say they will continue testing the water in the meantime. We will be following this all of this all of this very closely. You can get another look at that map of the affected zip codes. We've posted it on our website, cbsphiladelphia.com. Carrie.
All right, so you guys just saw all of the mayhem that's going on in Philly right now. People trying to find water. It is insane. Now, there's been a lot of stuff going on here in the Twin Cities as well for some of y'all who aren't aware. We had posted back on March 17th on Instagram, we had posted that in Minnesota there was a nuclear power plant leak and over 400 gallons of radioactive spillage is basically spilling into the ground and may be headed towards the Mississippi River. Well, for the folks who live up here in the Twin Cities, you guys know we get most of our drinking water from the Mississippi. And not only that, the Mississippi River starts in St. Paul. It starts in like the Twin Cities area, but it goes all the way down and it empties into the Gulf of Mexico. So it travels through several states, emptying out near Louisiana. So this is a big deal. If the Mississippi River gets infected with this radioactive waste, um, not only is it going to affect us here in the Twin Cities, but several, several cities, several states along the Mississippi that depend on the Mississippi for everything from drinking water to just being able to, you know, for the ships to travel to ship things to other states and other cities. A radioactive leak at a nuclear power plant right here in Minnesota. XL Energy says it happened at its plant in Monticello last November. Now, contaminated water is slowly creeping toward the Mississippi River. WCCO's Alan Henry spoke with agencies about how they plan to stop it and why it took months for the public to find out. Jeff Rowan lives about a half a mile from XL Energy's nuclear power plant in Monticello. He had no idea that four months ago, 400,000 gallons of radioactive water leaked in the facility. Yeah, that that concerns me. That they wouldn't, somebody would have wouldn't have told. Especially the city should have let us know. Somebody should have let us know. Both XL and the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency released statements about the leak Thursday afternoon, making it public knowledge for the first time. They say on November 22nd, they discovered a pipe leaking the radioactive water and began working to fix it. Almost four months now, why are people just now hearing about this? If at any point there had been a concern for the public safety, we would of course immediately uh, provided much more information, uh, but we also wanted to make sure we fully understood what was going on uh, before we started raising any concerns with with the public around us. Both XL and the Minnesota Department of Health say at this point, there's no risk to the public. The plant is located about three quarters of a mile away from the Mississippi River. And officials tell me none of that leaked water has reached the river, at least not yet. The uh, groundwater beneath the facility, it's been uh, determined that it moves in the direction of the Mississippi River uh, slowly, but, but that's the direction that it flows or moves underground. As crews work to keep the leaked water on site at the plant and retrieve it from underground, they say the rain and snow we're getting now is actually helping. So this is a really big deal. And the crazy thing is they knew about this spill as far back as November, but we did not find out about this as a public until March 17th. You know, I have some cases of bottled water, but I'm definitely going to get more because as I was trying to follow up on the story to see, OK, what's been quiet? What's the tea now? Well, now, as of two days ago, they are doing an update on the story and they're basically shutting down the plant because it's still leaking. Y'all go ahead and check this out. Well, right now, XL Energy is in the process of shutting down its Monticello nuclear plant to fix a radioactive leak that has reached groundwater. And that is causing Twin Cities water leaders to prepare a plan in case any of the chemical gets into the Mississippi River where Minneapolis pulls its drinking water supply. That supply goes out to several surrounding cities. Danny Spiewak takes us inside what's happening in Monticello and what it means for you. Danny? Yeah, Julie and Randy, there is no evidence at this point to suggest that the leak will reach the Mississippi, but Minneapolis water treatment officials say they're making a plan and monitoring things just in case. And again, at this point, state and federal agencies say that leak is contained to the Monticello plant site. Doing everything we can to remove that water from the ground. We are pumping from four wells. I, I, I understand what you mean. Ago. Yeah, no, I understand Early. what you're saying. People who live in Monticello continue to push Excel Energy and public officials for more information about the power plant leak. Why, is, why wouldn't this have come out last fall when this happened? They burn the lack of trust of this community. No doubt, 400,000 gallons of water containing tritium represents a larger leak, but the Minnesota Department of Health and other agencies 
Obviously, there's no evidence of a threat to the public. Do you agree with that assessment? I do agree with that assessment. Dr. Emily Caffrey is an expert in health physics at the University of Alabama at Birmingham. It's on site, it's not publicly accessible, so it's not a concern for public safety at this time. Caffrey notes that tritium is naturally occurring. It's all around us, it's in our water, it's in our bodies. In her estimation of Monticello, even if someone drank two liters a day for a whole year at the levels that leaked, the exposure would still be less than the background radiation you get simply from living in the U.S. Really, we're talking about a very, very small dose. Still, after repairs to the leak failed to work, Excel Energy has started the process of temporarily shutting down the plant. It is a prudent decision to shut it down early and just take care of it so there's just not more leakage. They've cleaned up about a third of that tritium already. So again, monitor the situation, watch the numbers. I expect you'll see they, the on-site ones decrease, and I don't expect that you'll see anything off-site, but that's the prudent thing to do. Excel Energy says the Monticello plant will be slowly powered down over the next couple of days, but they have not given a timetable for when they will power it back up. All right, so you guys just saw that news story. So the Monticello plant is basically temporarily shutting down. And I also love how the lady with the blue hair, nothing against blue haired people, but is telling us that, you know, not to worry. You can drink these chemicals for a year and it's still not as bad as just living in America. Ma'am, sit down. OK, nobody wants to ingest radioactive waste. OK, it's one thing to go get an X-ray when you need it. It's one thing to possibly breathe things in the air. But it's another thing to be consuming and drinking radioactive waste on a daily basis. Like that's not comforting. So, Miss Blue Hair, I'm going to need you to have several seats. I just need them to clean this up because that's just really scary. Radioactive. Like, I feel like I'm living in The Simpsons. Y'all remember in The Simpsons, once again, predictive programming when the nuclear power plant that Homer worked at, it spilled radioactive waste and they had that three eyed fish. So, yeah, we're not going to do that. We need this taken care of ASAP. <laughs> so this is really frightening. Um, you know, don't ever want to cause a panic, but you should always have enough water to last you at least a week. Put it in your garage, put it in your pantry, keep it under your bed, but you want to have enough water. I even keep cases of water in my car just in the event you get stuck in a snowstorm or your car breaks down. I have to stay hydrated. So I keep a case of water in the car as well. But um, and then there's also other things you can use. There's like prepping gear. Like I have this prep thing where you put it in your bathtub, you fill it up with water and you zip it up and you're good. So there's things you can do, you know, what I'm saying so you have enough water for cooking and even bathing, um, you know, if you don't have access to bottled water. So like right now, while a lot of cities like Philly are under this water alert that starts today, People who have prepped and already had these little kits, they would have filled their bathtub with that kit, and that would be enough to last them a week, if not longer, because it's pretty big. Um, so you, you just want to keep in mind, it's a lot of stuff going on. But now, not only Minnesota, not only Ohio, not only Philly, um, in Mississippi and in Kentucky back in February, this was around the time of the train derailment, they also had their own chemical spills. Now, with Kentucky being close to Ohio, a lot of that spillage was kind of runoff from the Ohio situation and their chemical spills. They were noticing a lot of fish and wildlife dying. And then in Mississippi, they had a huge chemical spill um, down there back in February as well. So I want you guys to check Officials this confirm they're investigating a chemical spill in an Erlanger Creek. A woman took this photo. It's a picture of Bullock Pen Creek this morning. As you can tell, it's blanketed by white foam. She said she began noticing it several days ago and reported it to the Kentucky Sanitation District number one today. She said they got the phone cleaned up by about 1.30 this afternoon, but they're still investigating to determine what it is and where it February came from. February 22nd, three days ago now, uh, there was a chemical spill from the water district. I believe it was a soap, but now I can't find the source on that. Um, but some type of industrial cleaner that spilled into the creek. You can see there wasn't a super concerning amount of dead fish. I know this looks bad, but there's probably only about 10 dead minnows and that dead frog. Um, but what was concerning is what I didn't see any live fish which normally in this creek, I see fish every time I go walk through here. At the end of this, I actually have a clip I filmed a couple years ago when everything was healthy and moving. But yeah, there was no fish swimming in the creek that I saw.
which is pretty unusual. Even in, when it's colder part of the year like this, I almost always see a school of creek chubs, a couple sunfish darting around. But yeah, this was uh, a few years ago here in the same creek where everything was healthy and thriving. But yeah, they did confirm there was a chemical spill, uh, but that's about all they've done. So if anybody has any more information, please leave it down in the comments for me. Thanks for watching. Are you concerned about the latest chemical spill today? A spill was reported in DeSoto County. A fire at Schultz Extruded Products in Hernando, Mississippi caused the chemicals to leak into a nearby creek. The damage was done in hydrofluoric acid washed into the creek, sparking a massive operation. And DeSoto County officials said, there's nothing to worry about. You're drinking water, it's it's fine. For those of you wondering what hydrofluoric acid is, the CDC says it's used to make refrigerant, aluminum, among other things. It also can cause damage to the human skin and tissue. It might be a good idea to stock up on some bottled water if you're in the area. Actually, regardless where you are, you should always have at least a few weeks on hand. The Guardian just released an article saying that chemical spills are happening once every two days. And there have been 30 reported so far in 2023. And that's reported. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes. On top of all this, there was also another chemical spill in Kentucky that not a lot of people are talking about. This photo, it's a picture of Bullock Penn Creek this morning. As you can tell, it's blanketed by white foam. Statistically, your town will eventually be on this list, if not next. Let me know in the comments if you think all these chemical spills happening are somehow related, and what are you doing to prepare right now if this happens in your area? All right, so you guys just saw that. So this situation is very frightening because, again, you know, we can go days without food, but you, can, you can't go too long without water. And we put our trust in these cities that when we go to turn on our tap water, the tap water is safe. And it's very frightening that all of these chemical spills are happening. You know, the Delaware River is what supplies the city of Philadelphia, and I'm sure several other neighboring cities as well. And so it's very frightening. And the officials are saying that everybody needs to store tap water. And that's exactly what you need to do. Me and along with the entire city of Philadelphia, we found out Sunday. I don't live in Philly, but if I lived in Philly, imagine we'd be, you know, filling up pots and pans and, you know, Kool-Aid containers and jugs. But why give people 24 hours and say you guys have until Monday? Like this alert should have been given out Friday. So people had over the weekends to go buy barrels and just do what they needed to do to go buy big containers that they can store their water in. So this is just really frightening. Again, like I've been telling y'all, you know, y'all have accused my channel of prep shaming. I don't even understand what that logic is. It's making people aware to keep themselves and their family safe. If that is prep shaming, then call me a prep shamer all day. But I will always protect and give knowledge to my tea sippers. Well, at least to the ones who want it, the ones who don't, that's their business. But the ones who appreciate the information, I will sound the alarm every freaking time. So... Please make sure, even if your city's not affected, I would say if you're in a state that's close to one of these affected cities, like Wisconsin, y'all are literally right across the border from us. Hi, neighbor. I would suggest you all kind of prepare too because, you know, the Mississippi can affect y'all. So just be smart. Understand where you live. And if you're near these areas, um, just have a few cases of water, you know, just in case. Um, just... Just be prepared for everything at this point. Between the water, between these train derailments. Remember last year was a food plant issue. Every every food plant was burning up. Chicken plant was burning up. This year seems to be a water issue. And like I said, with food, yes, the price is going up. It's expensive. It's unfortunate. But you can survive, you know, quite a bit of time without like your favorite meal. But water, that's a whole nother situation. So this is very, very frightening. So I wanted to make a video about this for those who are not aware that this is going on. And Philadelphia is a major city. So this is very scary. You know, usually when it's little towns that we've never heard of, like a Palestine, Ohio, or, you know, Boonfuck, whatever, tiny, tiny town, people tend to ignore it and they're like, oh, you know, it's just a small town. It's never going to affect us. But those people in those tiny towns are real people and they're being really affected by things that are beyond their control. And it's very sad. 
And so now that it's hit a major city like Philadelphia, this is becoming global news. But there's been so many small cities that have been affected by these chemical spills, things getting into the water. So let's continue to keep everybody in prayer and just, you know, just pray over your water. Pray that it's safe. Protect yourself. Get yourself bottles of water. You know, if you're not into prepping, you should look at prepping because it's really not a joke at this point. And again, when resources are short and shit hits the fan, it affects everybody. I don't care. Young, old, rich, poor, gay, straight. None of that stuff matters. Politics, none of that stuff matters when it comes to the human experience. And as human beings, we all need food. We all need shelter. And most importantly, we all need water. So on that note, I'm out. Feel free to leave a comment. Hopefully this video will get at least some views. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Trying to sound the alarm, but you guys enjoy the rest of your day and good luck to everybody in Philly. You know what I'm saying? The water is running out out there. Um, you might want to, you might have to head out to a different state and get, you know, a few packages, but also think of your neighbors. Don't go in and buy 30 cases of water. You know, I would say get two to three and leave some for other people as well. We shouldn't be hoarding water. Nobody should be selling a single bottled water for $7. Like, let's not do that. Let's let's think of other people in this time of need. So thank y'all for tuning in. I will talk to y'all later. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.